Hi, I'm Scott Dyer, and I'm here at the Paul Bunyan Logging Camp along with some folks from the Chippewa Valley Museum. And uh, typically, I'm, I'm here just to play some music and talk a little bit about entertainment. So why don't we get started with uh, what I like to call, it's Mountain Dulcimer, and it's handmade, and I'd be happy to play some music for you with it. So. <laughs> is a gift and of course that's not a song typically heard in the 19th century but it's still a really good one. Uh, your lumberjacks would use this building pretty much just for sleeping uh, except on Saturday nights because they get Sunday off they could stay up a little bit late and they could have a little bit of a good time. Uh, right now I'm sitting on what's called the deacon's bench and this is actually original to a logging camp. Uh, same with these bunks back here and these would be called side loaders and that you'd load in from the side rather than breech or muzzle loaders where you'd crawl into that. Got to sleep two to a bed, so of course it would get pretty loud in here with all the snoring. And of course one of the big complaints these loggers said is because there were so many people from different countries, they'd all be snoring in different languages. One of the songs I think I'd like to play here is one that you'd probably hear in a logging camp. And you got to remember if this is happening in the 1870s, 1880s, many of these men would be veterans from the American Civil War. Uh, so this will be Battle Hymn of the Republic. <laughs> Might I have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord? He has trampled out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. served them by the cook and the cookie. Yeah, they did call them cookies, and usually young men uh, that would be working here. <clears throat> and uh, they ate a lot of the same food. Also, in the spirit of that, because these, uh, these guys typically would have been the French that would have started up here, I'm going to sing a song that, eh, well, maybe not native to a lumber camp, is kind of a fun one, and I bet you could probably sing along once you get the idea. So, I'll play it once through and then start singing. Think of all the 
Did I say beans? I think I said beans. Oh, the bread we ate. Oh, we ate. Oh, we ate. Oh, we ate. Oh, 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 we ate. Think of oh, we ate. Oh, we ate. Think of oh, we ate. So when people would come in here and they'd have a fun time on Saturday night, uh, of course there were no women in log camps, same as there was no alcohol and there was no gambling. We didn't want things that would divide people and get them fighting. Uh, so because there were no women, uh, a lot of times men would actually tie a white silk ribbon or handkerchief around their uh, elbow or their arm and that would indicate that they were going to dance the ladies part because he had to have someone lead and someone follow. Um, one story I always like to tell too is that uh, there were a lot of older lumberjacks and younger ones. I'd be right about in the middle. But uh, one story is that there was a young lumberjack and he came into a camp and he thought he was really great stuff, really good. Um, but uh, there was an old timer. He said, they said, no way can you cut more trees down than this old timer. So the old timer said, eh, yeah, you know, the kid said, no, no way. I can beat him. I'm, I'm young, I'm tough. I can do this. So the kid goes out in the woods and said, okay, I'm going to make you a bet. If, uh, if, if I can cut down more trees, then you, you have to wash my clothes on Sunday. And the old timer said, I'll take you up on that. So the next day, they go out in the woods and they get out there and sun. And that's always the way it was. You'd have to walk out in the dark, you'd start cutting when you could see the end of your axe from the light of the sun. And they start cutting. And the young time, young, young, and he thinks he's got a beat because, boy, he's just chopping down trees. Left and right, he's going at it, and every now and then he looks over at the old timer, and the old timer is sitting down. He's taking a break. And the kid says, "I've got this. I've got this taken care of." And so uh, the, the the kid at the end of the day, they, they're going to stack up logs, and the old timer had him beat hands down by by several several board lengths of, of timber. And uh, the kid says, "That's impossible. You must have cheated. Uh, I saw you, and you were taking breaks." And the old timer says, oh, Sonny, I wasn't taking a break. I was sharpening my axe. So just a reminder there that sometimes it's not how hard you work, but how smart you work. Um, I think I can play probably about one or two more, and then I think we'll probably call it a quit. So uh, let's see. Just going to look at my cheat sheet there. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, since this is supposed to be for the 4th of July, I'm going to try one here and see if you folks can recognize it. And of course, that's in Act Not in Heaven. Um, we typically know it as a Star Spangled Banner. So, uh, I'll go ahead and play one more. This is a favorite of mine, no words, but I do hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you have a great holiday.